Okay, so this is going to be a video over all things quadratics. Assuming you've already seen quadratics quite a bit in your life, it's just a review and maybe a couple other little things that you didn't know. Um, first of all, I want to hit on the three different forms a quadratic could be given in or really put into and sort of what their advantages are. Um, the first is vertex form, and vertex form is going to help you hopefully, obviously, find the vertex because once you have completed the square, uh, your vertex is going to be HK. Um, now, remember with a quadratic, you've got a minimum or a maximum, um, and that's, that's another word for vertex because the parabola could be facing up or it could be facing down. So this vertex is going to help you find the min or the max, uh, depending on if it's been reflected. Um, in this form, some people also think it might be easier for some people to find the um, y-intercepts or the x-intercepts. Uh, I don't necessarily think so. I pretty much just use this for vertex form. And then if I want to find intercepts or something else on the graph, I change it into one of these other forms. Uh, we'll do an example in a little bit. Uh, but standard uh, is actually the most probably popular um, in the math world. Um, from standard form, it's, it's kind of nice because you can find your y-intercept really easily uh, because your y-intercept of your graph could be found by plugging in a zero for x, which means it's just going to be the c value that's at the back. Um, and the other thing that a um, standard form is good for is just the overall feel of the parabola. Um, using the a, you can decide if it's facing up or down. Um, you could plot points in a little bit easier, but um, anything else, like if you wanted to find your x-intercepts, um, you're going to have to either factor this um, or do the quadratic formula. Uh, the quadratic formula is going to be only if it won't factor, in my opinion. So as a refresher, the quadratic formula is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's going to find your x-intercepts for you if um, that's what you're looking for. Um, and then the other cool thing um, from standard form is that you can find the vertex pretty easily without having to complete the square. Now, some people like to do completing the square to turn it into vertex form so that they can use this, but there's also a way to find the vertex by running the formula negative b over 2a. And what that does is if you do your minus b over your 2 times your a, um, it gives you the x value of the vertex. And then to find the y value of the vertex, all you have to do is plug this number back in, and it's going to give you the y. So this form really is nice because there's a way to find all things that you need without having to change into another form or get creative. Um, factored form is best for finding the x-intercepts. Um, I love this form. If someone says find the x-intercepts, they are literally right there because all you have to do is take your factors and set each of them to zero, which means that your x-intercept is just going to be C uh, and D. And notice I'm writing these as a coordinate. That's also important. Um, please don't put x-intercepts and then x equals c, x equals d, they are coordinates, okay? So c comma 0, d comma 0. And what's nice about that is once you sketch your x-intercepts, um, wherever c and d are, then you're going to know, so let's say c is here and d is here. If you know that you're going to cross at c and d, the vertex has to be right in the middle. So you could find that x that's right in the middle, and then you could plug it back in up here, and that's going to give you the y. And then you'll know if it's, you know, if the y is up here, then it means it's a maximum. And you can then sketch your parabola and just use symmetry. So that's kind of nice. Um, so, yeah. So let's do an example so that we can kind of run through how to do all these. Um, one more thing uh, that I should have said already. From standard form, there's something called a discriminant that a lot of people like to use. Uh, not discriminate, discriminant, okay? Now, a discriminant in math is basically going to tell you the number of um, x-intercepts you're going to have, which means it's the, the number of solutions. Because, y'all, um, x-intercepts on a graph are literally the answers to the problem. Like, solutions are x-intercepts, are the roots um, the zeros, all of these words are synonymous when it comes to um, 
uh, when it comes to the solutions, okay? So if somebody says, how many real solutions is the graph going to have? Um, you're going to do the discriminant. And the formula for the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. Now that should look familiar, okay? Why does it look familiar? Well, it's right here up above in the formula for the quadratic formula. And what we're doing is we're basically saying that if we run this formula, since it's under a radical in the other formula, we really want it to be positive. Because if it's positive, we are going to have two real solutions. And once you run the quadratic formula, um, that should make sense. Um, if, however, you get a negative, right, if b squared minus 4ac is negative, then what happens is you have a negative under a square root. And you did this last year in Algebra 2. If there's a negative under the square root, you are imaginary. So you're going to have two imaginary or non-real solutions. Or some people say no solutions, okay? Um, and then the third option is like, well, what if it actually equals zero when I run the formula? If that happens, uh, you're going to end up um, basically canceling this out. And what that means is that the, um, the vertex is on the x-axis. It means that you get only one real solution kind of how that works. So that's a nice little thing to know how to do to save yourself some time. So what we're going to do is we are going to take a problem that is in, uh, I think I want to start with standard form, okay? If somebody gives me a quadratic and we're going to run through basically how to do all the things with it. So uh, let's pretend that we were given y is equal to um, 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. And they want to know all the different things. So um, the first thing I'm going to run is, you know, maybe we want to find the discriminant because maybe we are curious about how many solutions this graph is going to have. So this is my a, this is my b, this is my c. I'm going to do the formula b squared minus 4ac and see what happens. So b squared would be negative 5 squared minus 4 times a times c. Notice I took the negatives with those numbers. And now when I solve that, I'm going to get 25 uh, plus 24. Uh, which is, you know, what is that, 49? So that is a positive number. So I know this is going to have two real solutions, which means it's going to have two x-intercepts. So when I go to graph it, it's going to cross the x-intercept twice. I also know from looking at this, it's going to be a parabola facing upward. The reason I know this is because my leading term is negative. So another good thing to find might be the dang vertex and the intercepts. So if I want to find the vertex, we're going to use the formula from above, minus b over 2a. So if I take minus b over 2a, so that's going to be negative b would be a 5 over 2 times 2, which is 4. So I just took the numbers from above and dropped them into that formula. So the x part of my vertex is 5 fourths. To get the y part, what I'm going to have to do is take that x and plug it in everywhere here. So it would be like 5 fourths squared minus 5 times 5 fourths minus 3. And I'm going to do all of that math and get my y. So you can see why some people don't like leaving it in this form uh, to do a lot of stuff because it, you know, fraction math, it becomes a little painful. So this is going to become 50 over 16 minus 25 over 4 minus 3. Let me get common denominators everywhere. So if I do that into a 16, that's now a 100. If I put a 16 here, that's now a 48. So I'm getting 50 minus 100 is negative 50, minus 48 is negative 98. So I know that reduces. Let's see, what would that be, 44? No, silly me, what would that be? Um, help me, help me, 49. So negative 49 over 8. So that would be my vertex. So I'm going to go ahead and start graphing because I know my vertex is 5 fourths, which um, 5 fourths, guys, is just a little bit over 1. And then um, if that's 1 and that's 2, negative 49 over 8, oof, that's going to be somewhere around negative 6, 4, 5, 6. 
so negative 6. So that's going to be my vertex, and this graph is facing up, so I know it is a minimum. Now, what can I do? Well, let me find my x-intercepts. So how do we find our x-intercepts? Well, to find your x-intercepts, you either factor or use the quadratic formula. I always try to factor first, um, and I'm just doing that right up here, um, because it makes life easier. And then we're going to set each factor to zero. So, um, oh yeah, one more thing I could have done really quick. Look at my C term right there. It's a negative 3. And so above we said that the C term is your y-intercept. So I know it's going to cross there. That helps us out a little bit. Um, and now I'm going to do my x-intercepts. So let me try to factor. Um, the only way to make a 2x squared is a 2x times x. And then in the back, the only way to make a 3 is 3 times 1. So you could try this first, and then if you were to FOIL and do outside, outside, inside, inside, that makes a 2x, that makes a 3x, and we're trying to make a negative 5 in the middle. So if I put negatives on both of those, that would make a negative 5. But this is not the right kind of factoring because if I FOIL and check my answer, when I get to the last number times the last number, I get a positive 3. And over here it's supposed to be a negative. So what that tells me is either this doesn't factor or I need to switch my 3 and my 1 and try again. So let me switch those around, put the 1 here and the 3 there. So now if I do this times this, it's 6x. This times this is 1x. And if I need to make a negative 5 in the middle, I need to make the 6 negative. So the negative would go on the 3. This needs to be positive, so it goes on the 1. And now it works out. All right, so I'm going to take each of those factors and set them equal to 0. So 2x plus 1 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. So my x-intercepts are the points, um, let me see, if I move that over, that's what, negative 1 half 0. And if I move that over, it's 3, 0. So at 3, I cross the axis, and at negative 1 half, I cross the axis. And now we have several good points that we could make a parabola out of. Whee! It should be more rounded at the bottom. I did a terrible job of rounding, but that's kind of what you want to do. Awesome. So this is how we do it. Sorry about it being so sloppy. Um, I wanted to fit it all on one screen, and it just looks terrible. So this is just using standard form, start to finish, what it could look like. But let's talk about what else you might be asked to do or, or what else might be kind of cool. Um, you might also be asked, what is that, two? I'm just going to rewrite it because it's gross. Okay, so you might also be asked to like turn that into the different forms, you know what I mean? So I just want to show you kind of how to go back and forth between the forms. So um, what was that? A 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. Okay, so this is standard form. If somebody wants you to turn it into vertex form, you're going to need to complete the square. And remember, completing the square, the idea, we did this in the conics unit, you're going to want to move the 3 to the other side. And then you're going to want to take the 2 off the front of these. And um, then, what, now we fill in the missing number here. So if I need to fill in the missing number, I need to take half of what's in the middle and square it, okay? So half of 5 halves is 5 fourths, and then I'm going to square that. So it's going to be 25 sixteenths. And whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. But remember, you don't just add a 25 sixteenths. There was a 2 in the front of that 25 sixteenths. So we need to multiply those, and that's what gets added to the other side. The next thing you would do is go ahead and um, we'll put these numbers together over here. So 3 plus, let's see, this is going to end up being um, 25 over 8. Is that right? 25 over 8 plus 3. So that's going to give us y plus, it's going to be a 49 eighths. And if you don't believe me, check it in the calculator. I just did a little fraction math, and I'm really struggling with this plus sign. Give me two seconds. There we go. So I'm getting the plus, okay? And then over here, uh, we factor this down. So it's two parentheses. Uh, well, we do half of the middle term, so x minus 5 fourths squared. 
uh, then I can kick my 49 eighths back over to the other side. So we're kind of coming up here. So y is equal to 2 times x minus 5 fourths squared minus 49 over 8. And as you can see, we've already done this problem and we already found the vertex, but now that it's in vertex form, the hk of this problem is a 5 fourths and a negative 49 eighths, which matches what we did whenever we ran the formula minus v over 2a. So I'm just showing you that you have options, okay? Um, and then to get from standard form to factored form is wicked easy because all that we have to do is um, actually factor the original problem that we have in standard form. So in order to do that, we are just going to This isn't my class. W207, this is N207. <laughs> That's okay. Um, okay, so to go from standard form to factored form, uh, you're just going to factor it. So if I want factored form, we've already factored this. So literally, guys, I'm not even going to rethink about it. I'm just going to do what I did earlier. And it was what, 2x? I think it was a, ooh, the 3 was there, the 1 was there minus plus yeah all right so that's factored form um, so there's getting between the forms now what if somebody started by giving you um, maybe a graph and saying like hey based on this graph and um, what's the equation of the parabola or something like that so um, what I would do so let's pretend that somebody gave us this and maybe there's an intercept here and an intercept here um, and then a vertex somewhere up here so if somebody gave me this and was like hey what's the what's the equation well the easiest way in my opinion is factored form because we already know that our x-intercepts are negative 2 and positive 1 so I would legit just start with factored form and be like, oh, that's like x plus 2 and then x minus 1. And the reason it's a plus 2 is because, remember when you go from parentheses to graph, that sign changes because in essence you were setting this equal to 0. So just make sure you change your signs when you move back into the parentheses. But this would be our factored form. Um, and then, um, yeah, that would be it if you wanted it to be in standard form then, oh, you know what I'm missing? I'm missing the fact that this is upside down. I wonder if any of y'all noticed that. If it's upside down, it means there's probably a negative in the front of these parentheses that would have reflected it. And honestly, there's probably a negative A. So this is kind of getting next level. But what you could do, or what I would do, is probably um, at this point decide if there was a dilation on the parabola. And if there was, that means that I could maybe take a point like wherever it crosses here. So let's say that this had been the point, um, let's make that a 3. Let's pretend that that had been the point zero, 3 where it crossed. You could take the 0 and the 3 and plug them in for the x's and the y's and then solve for a. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean 3 is the y, so I'm going to replace it here. We don't know what the dilation is. Um, and in the spot of x, I'm going to put a 0 plus 2, 0 minus 1, and just do math. So let's see, this would be 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. I've got a negative a times a negative 2, so that's going to actually be a positive 2a equals 3. And so a would be 3 over 2. So I would take that and go plug it back in um, for my dilation. So the actual equation that I didn't think about before, I just was about to move on, is to take a negative 3 halves uh, times x plus 2 times x minus 1. And this would be the factored form of the graph that's shown. If it asks for standard form of the graph that was shown, then I would do this the same way I told you. I would just start and do it all the same way, but then I would actually foil it out. That's all you have to do. If you foil all this, you know, if you foil, it's going to be in standard form, uh, but you do need to distribute the negative 3 halves after you foil. So that's how you could get to standard form. So from factored form to standard, we're just going to multiply all this out. Multiply it out until it looks like ax squared plus bx plus c. What if they wanted this equation in, um, you know, vertex form? Well, if it had asked me for vertex form instead, 
then what I would do is literally look at the graph for where that vertex is, whatever that HK is, and I would just put it into the correct form. Like it would be, uh, we do have to be careful with the, here it is, okay? So we do have to be careful with, once again, the A in the front. Um, but whatever that HK is, you could plug in, and then you would find that A similarly to the way I found the other one.